All right, it's day 21, and I have a new setup. The clamp lamps are smaller. Instead of the 10-inch clamp lamps, I have the 8.5-inch ones with the same weak 500 lumen bulbs. Nevertheless, the light intensity is quite high. This thermometer says it's 84 Fahrenheit. It's 29 Celsius. This is a $6 glass jar that I got from Target. It's really nice. American-made glass in Ohio. And if you look at this thermometer clock right behind, that's 27 Celsius. So I know there's a bit of a greenhouse effect in a closed jar like this, but I guess the truth of the temperature here is somewhere in between 29 Celsius and 27. So maybe it's 28, which is uh, significantly less than it used to be. That used to be probably, uh, let's see, two and a half Celsius higher maybe three Celsius higher with uh, the much stronger bulbs. And we're gonna take a look at what's going on inside. Okay, so this thing, it has beautiful colors, uh, a dark purple, it used to be kind of a pink or a bright purple and several patches of green. You know, it's resting on this cup, which is a perfect regular object for keeping everything in place. My only goal is to maintain a stable position so things don't shift around when I'm moving the jar. And, you know, hopefully with the reduced light, this thing can do better, maybe even start rooting because I know this basically won't root unless the temperature drops or let's see, there's no light maybe. I don't know which of those two factors, or is it both, that are preventing rooting, but it seems healthy and it's not shriveling up, which is good. And we'll move this out of the way temporarily and look at this sample that I've been keeping in the dark. You know, this maybe gets anywhere from 23 to 26 Celsius, but most of the time I'd say it's probably around 25, so let me try to get closer. Um. It's seen a lot of development, but as you can see the roots, some of them get kind of blackened or browned and pinched off, it seems. And my best guess is that's root rot because I sprayed too much. So after I realized last night I had root rot on day 20, I basically had this um, uncovered for, I guess, 10 or so hours and it was in the shade and basically that helped dry this thing out. Um, the shoots look really nice. So that's a surprising development, but you know, it's the roots that I'm worried about. And maybe in this new setup, you know, um, with light, there are, they'll be less prone to root rot. So I'm gonna transfer that into this jar and hopefully, um, you know, the spraying once a day at the beginning of the day and closing the jar lid, that'll be sufficient to keep the roots growing and healthy. If not, there's still plenty of time to adjust. All right, the transfer is complete. And as you can see, the shoot growth is coming along nicely. Um, most of those roots are still white and healthy. I don't think the root rock uh, was a result of any kind of infection. It's just, you know, when things are sitting in beads of water, all the time, then they kind of die and pinch off. So I don't see any more death and decay compared to say 24 hours earlier. And you can even see down there near the handle, there's a little bit of root rot going down there, but you know, uh, with this reduced temperature and you know, reduced light intensity, Hopefully we can see more rooting activity and find a happy medium where the shoots and the roots can grow without soil. So I'm just going to clamp this up. I won't water again until tomorrow. But um, let's just check out that light intensity. I have my lux meter. So, you know, depending on where you hold it, you could get really high readings. You know, that's... uh up to 16,000 lux. And you know, if you shift this around, 
you can get considerably less, but that's plenty of light. So I think the sacrifice was well worth it. And there's definitely energy savings going on here. But if that proves to still be too much uh, light and heat, then I can further just reduce this to one bulb overhead and see if that, you know, changes things for the better. Well, the other thing to discuss is the number of hours of light this receives. I had it on for nearly 16 hours a day, and I was thinking I'm going to reduce that to, you know, 10 or 8 hours, whatever. Maybe that will shift the balance favorably towards a balanced root and shoot growth. It's day 25, day 11 for these two tubers. And the shoots are doing really well on the best one. The other one, you know, I don't know if it can make a comeback and adjust to these new conditions that are more appropriate for rooting or just sprouting in general. But, you know, for the meantime, we have this to look at and it's doing really well. The foliage is kind of weedy, uh, water just beads up on it and doesn't absorb into it, so I don't really have to worry about the the leaves rotting. Uh, the roots are doing okay. I've decided, you know, when I get home from work, I just take off the lid, let this thing air out, turn off the lights, and that should promote, you know, more root growth or swing the equilibrium more in, in its favor. But for the time being, there's just so much budding going on. You can kind of see the structure behind this. You know, it's almost like tendons uh, underneath the skin of a finger you know, on a human or a hand, like the back of your hand. And, you know, these leaves should get a lot bigger pretty soon. You can see other roots. They kind of have, um, you know, that yellow brownish uh, appearance, you know, just like ginger and the rest of the you know, so-called skin, the outer dead layers of this tuber. And there is some mold. I had a root rot problem tracing back to a few days ago, and that seems to have subsided for now, but I think I'll keep things uh, drier going forward.